1948, two and one half million people cut off, isolated from the outside world. The rooftops of Berlin, chimneys line the sky in smokeless patterns, mute testimony to the economic wall enclosing a shattered city, a wall over which airplanes are still flying, bringing food and coal on a 24-hour round-the-clock schedule. The people in the western sector of Berlin have learned to live with the sight and sound of these giant four-engine aircraft. For the past year, this has been their only hope. The only path open between Germany to the west and the landlocked island of Berlin. Today, one can read some doubt, some disillusionment in the faces of the men and women in the streets. A fear that any agreements reached at the conference between Washington and Moscow and London and Paris may not last. So what is our position in Berlin today? Brigadier General Frank L. Howley, American Commandant in Berlin and a member of the Allied Commandatura, the Four Power Control Board, explains it this way. My factory was one of the first to close. Blockade meant no coal, no coal meant no electricity, and no electricity meant no work. Blockade meant something else, too. It meant no food. At least that's how it looked to us. Then things began happening at Tampelhof Airfield. The Americans, the British, the French had a different slant on this blockade. According to the press, they were going to supply Berlin by air. Well, you can't believe everything you read in the papers. Even after those first planes landed, we were kind of skeptical. Who ever heard of feeding two and a quarter million people by air? But it meant a job for me, and that was the main thing then. What a job, too. About all I could say for it is, it was steady, a steady backache. On the day shift, or the night shift, it didn't much matter. I guess I was beginning to feel a little sorry for myself.